A serious crash that killed a driver in Lexington has shut down a busy road for hours. Coming up, we'll tell you where it happened and when the road could reopen. A WKYT exclusive, we sit down with Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis to talk about how her life has changed since she was thrust into the national spotlight. Bright blue skies out the rest of the day. Few clouds do filter in, but it stays dry. Temperatures feel amazing today. Tomorrow, big time changes take you into your weekend. I'll show you that coming up in just a few minutes. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Part of Lexington Road remains closed this midday after a deadly head-on crash. It happened a little after 7 this morning on Lane Allen Road near Harrodsburg Road. Both drivers were rushed to the hospital where one was pronounced dead. WKYT's Mark Barber is live now with the latest on the investigation and the traffic impact. That is our top story at noon. Mark. Good afternoon, Bill. Crews now have those vehicles that were involved in this fatal crash up on tow trucks and they are preparing to move those out of here and reopen Lane Island Road here between Garden Springs and Harrodsburg Road sometime in the next hour or so. Now we spoke with a man after this crash happened about five hours ago. He was walking by when that collision happened and he says not only was it very difficult to, to hear it, he says it was also very difficult to see those two mangled cars sitting in the road here with their drivers trapped inside. Now crews were able to pull both drivers from those wrecked vehicles and they were taken to UK hospital. Now we are told that about an hour and a half ago, one of those drivers did not survive their injuries and died. The coroner's office has not released their name yet because they're still looking for their family, trying to tell them what happened. While investigators are still trying to figure out what caused this crash, we are learning more about what happened from a driver who was right behind the vehicles. He says that the truck was heading west around 7:15 this morning when it crossed the center line, hitting a car head on. One man told us the impact was so jarring he thought a tractor trailer had crashed. As soon as he saw the wrecked car and the truck and all the debris, he says his mind went straight to the drivers and their families. I feel for the families, you know. Um, accidents happen. Uh, some are unavoidable, but uh, if you just slow down a little, take your time. At this time, police do not think that the driver who crossed the center line will be charged because they think that this was just a terrible accident. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And the driver who was in the van right behind the two vehicles that crashed ran off of the road to avoid them. The driver and his young daughter were not hurt. A man was rushed to the hospital overnight after another violent crash. This one happened around midnight this morning on New Circle Road at Alumni. Police say the driver lost control of his SUV and then it flipped over into the median and landed on its side. The driver was ejected. A man is fighting for his life in Jessamine County after a crash there. It happened on Kentucky 169 near Taylor Made Farms. Police say 26 year old Anthony Scheffel lost control, ran off the road, and hit a rock wall. At last check, he was listed in critical condition at UK Hospital. Well, it is a beautiful day in the bluegrass with sunny skies and mild temperatures, but enjoy it while you can because big changes are coming for the weekend in the form of rain and cold. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center now with a look ahead. Well, I just stepped outside about 20 minutes ago. It's already phenomenal feeling outside. I mean, you got to get into the rest of the afternoon. Remember, we still have three to four more hours of heating to go, and we're already sitting there in the 50s for the most part. Northern zone, you're still holding on to those 40. But you know what? Uh, by the end of the day, you guys will be right around 50 degrees. The rest of us actually sitting in the mid 50s when it's all said and done. So, awesome, awesome day in store. This is well above average, about 15 degrees. Takes you off into the evening. Going out to dinner tonight will be just fine, dry, and also definitely not as cold as the past few evenings. We get into tomorrow. You see, the morning hours aren't all that bad. Can't rule out a stray shower or two, but really it's the second half of your day that we start to see some rain move on in because what we're going to be paying attention to is not to the north, it's actually to the south of us. Big swing of temperatures with these winds coming out of the south and funneling in. Some warmer and moist air that will give us that rain as we slide into tomorrow. I'm going to break down the timing on that, show you when you can expect snow and also the coldest air so far this season. It's coming up. 
All right, we'll see you shortly with that. Thank you, Micah. She says being in the spotlight is way out of her comfort zone. Today, for the first time, Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis sat down with local media to talk about her experiences over the last few months. Appearing for a taping of WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers program, I talked to Davis about becoming a national figure in the debate over same-sex marriage. Davis was jailed for five days this summer after refusing to issue marriage licenses following the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling legalizing gay marriage. She became emotional when I asked how all of this has changed her. It's probably made me a stronger uh, person, stronger Christian. When you get to a point where you are outside that realm where you're comfortable and where you have control, you have to rely on God. And that makes you stronger in your faith. Davis most recently made headlines when she attended this week's State of the Union address. We'll have more from Davis later today on WKYT, and you can watch the full interview on Kentucky Newsmakers this Sunday morning at 6 on WKYT. It repeats at 10 Sunday morning on the CW Lexington. Former Kentucky Governor Steve Beshear has a new job. Retirement didn't last long. He is actually returning to work at his old law firm, Sites and Harbison. Bashir worked there from 1987 until 2007 when he became governor. The law firm says Bashir handled complex business and bankruptcy cases during his previous tenure there. He will work part-time out of the firm's Lexington office, but serve clients throughout the region and in Washington, D.C. Fayette County Schools are hiring three new high school principals in the coming months. Henry Clay is one school looking for new leadership. This comes after a sudden transfer of former principal Greg Quinnen in December. Quinnen left Henry Clay to become the curriculum and instruction coach at Winburn Middle. Not much was said as to why, so our investigation team filed an open records request for documents about the transfer. We'll have that complete story coming up on WKYT News at 6. Well, you may have heard of the entrepreneur TV show Shark Tank. Well, Whitaker Bank Ballpark in Lexington is hosting its own version called Stash Tank. Eight teams of students from Lexington STEAM Academy are giving presentations of different ways the Lexington legends can make better use of the area behind the right field fence. Right now, it's home to the half-court basketball. One group proposes to turn that area into a rock climbing wall. They said our presentation was awesome. I'm not sure what they said to the other presentations, but it might have been awesome as well. But so far, I'm just, this is just hopes that we're going to, our presentation will be picked. The Lexington Legend staff will pick one team's idea in the next two weeks. Well, several lucky people will split the largest lottery jackpot in history. Three winning tickets were sold for last night's $1.6 billion Powerball drawing, but unfortunately, none here in Kentucky. Right, and even if you didn't win the big, the huge jackpot, there is still a possibility you may have won a million dollars or maybe a lesser amount. WKYT's Rebecca Smith is at our live desk to explain. Rebecca? In Kentucky, there are three lucky winners of the one million dollar prize, million with an M. All had five white balls. Hazard, Walton, and Paducah were the towns where those one million dollar jackpots were snatched up. There were also five fifty thousand dollar winners in Mount Sterling, Harrodsburg, Benton, Florence, and Hazard. Now, that is a situation where you're talking about four matching white balls and the Powerball. As far as the big winners, three winning tickets were sold in Tennessee, Florida, and California. That means the $1.6 billion will be split three ways. Lottery officials in Tennessee say the winning ticket was sold in Munford, north of Memphis. The California ticket was sold at a 7-Eleven in Chino Hills. We came down here to see who the winner was. Yeah, it's not, it's not us. <laughs> you see all those people, they're pretty excited there in California, even though they didn't personally get in on the win. It was someone in the community possibly. Cannot argue with that enthusiasm they have for other people. Well, the winning numbers, in case you missed them, 8, 27, 34, 4, 19, with a Powerball of 10. At the live desk, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Thank you, Rebecca. And winners have to pay 39.6% of the prize in federal income taxes, in addition to any state taxes.
Well, a smaller cast of Republican presidential candidates returning to the main stage tonight to battle it out in one of the final chances to sway voters ahead of the New Hampshire primary and the Iowa caucuses. A preview next on Kentucky's number one midday news. Also ahead, nominations have been announced for the 86th Annual Academy Awards. We'll take a look at this year's top contenders coming up on WKYT News at Noon. Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. The seven leading Republican presidential candidates will be vying together will be debating tonight in South Carolina. It is their sixth debate of the campaign season and the last one before the New Hampshire primary and the Iowa caucus. The latest polls show Ted Cruz ahead of Donald Trump in Iowa with Marco Rubio in third. Now, Kentucky U.S. Senator Rand Paul is still, as of this minute, trying to get in to tonight's debate. Paul says a new poll released by the Des Moines Register shows him in fifth place in Iowa, which would have qualified him for the debate. If he is not included on the main stage, Paul says he will skip the undercard debate. Bob Schieffer is returning to CBS News as a contributor during the 2016 presidential campaign. The veteran anchor and the former Face the Nation moderator who retired last year will be reporting for the network throughout the 2016 election and through the 2017 inauguration. In an appearance on CBS This Morning, Schieffer said, quote, I'm flattered and delighted to offer thoughts on this campaign. It's certainly one of the most unusual of my lifetime. A little bit of a failed retirement for a former Governor <laughs> Bashir and for Bob Schieffer. It sounds like That's going right. back to work. Coming back to work very quickly, you too. Got it. Well, the Oscar nominations are out, and Leonardo DiCaprio's latest, The Revenant, leads the pack with 12 nominations. Mad Max, Fury Road, and The Martian also had some strong showings, although Martian director Ridley Scott failed to nab a nomination. Suzanne Marquez has a look at all the surprises and snubs. The Revenant leads the Oscar race with 12 nominations, including Best Picture, Best Actor for Leonardo DiCaprio, and Best Director for Alejandro Iñárritu, who is going for his second win in a row. George Miller's action epic, Mad Max Fury Road, earned 10 nominations. Begin abort procedure. Let's wait it out. And The Martian notched seven, including a Best Actor nod for Matt Damon, but not one for director Ridley Scott. Watch out! Rounding out the best picture category are The Big Short, Bridge of Spies, Brooklyn, Room, and Spotlight. If we get one big movie. Brian Cranston surprised some with his best actor nomination for Trumbo. Rounding out that category, Michael Fassbender and Eddie Redmayne. Would you like to come visit me this Sunday? The critically acclaimed Carol was shut out of Best Picture, but Rooney Mara earned a supporting actress nod and Kate Blanchett scored in the Best Actress category. She will go up against frontrunner Brie Larson for Room, Jennifer Lawrence in Joy, Saoirse Ronan in Brooklyn, and Charlotte Rampling in 45 years. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Sylvester Stallone is anything but the underdog in the Best Supporting Actor category. His two nominations for playing the iconic Rocky Balboa come nearly 40 years apart. But the Academy snubbed his Creed co-star Michael B. Jordan. That, along with the absence of Idris Elba for Beasts of No Nation, have already sparked a backlash as all the acting nominations went to white performers. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Hollywood. Now, adding to the controversy, the NWA biopic Straight Outta Compton failed to score a Best Picture nomination, although it did score a screenplay nomination. Coming up at 12.30, we will tell you about a new bill being filed in Frankfurt today that would require children 12 years and under to wear a helmet when riding a bicycle. Now, your zone-by-zone zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. You know, it's a really nice day outside. Clear skies. We have a few clouds here and there, but that's about it. You look to the north of us, see the clouds to the north? Those aren't really going to affect us all that much. What we really need to be doing is looking to the south. Here's what we're going to be dealing with as we go throughout the rest of the day. Dome of higher pressure continues to funnel in that warmer and more moist air. And, and you don't believe me it's warmer and you haven't been outside the past couple of hours? Look at this, Frankfurt 51, Mountain Parkway, Lexington coming in at 52 degrees. Florence is still at 44. We still have the snowpack to the north for some of us, but it's melting away very rapidly. And just bright blue skies. Beautiful day. We'll finish off right there in the mid 50s, some low 50s to the north. 
Uh, but all in all, it's just going to be a phenomenal rest of the afternoon. Off into the evening, good time to head out to dinner. I mean, if you're one of those that just don't like to get out once it sunsets because it's just too cold, this isn't that day. I mean, this is a day that you want to take advantage of. Sunny, low to mid 50s the rest of the day. By far the best day in the forecast. And I mean by a long shot. Tomorrow the rain slides on in, mainly during the afternoon. I think overnight that's when the rain starts to switch over into the snow. But it's just a few flakes. Friday night and Saturday, I just don't see that much going on with this system. You'll get some flakes flying around. But in terms of accumulation, it's going to be very isolated, if any at all. Now, if you're looking for accumulation, that's actually going to be on Sunday. That's your best bet. It's not a high confidence thing that we're saying, okay, all of us are going to get accumulation because it's just not that much uh, really falling out of the sky at that time. Nonetheless, that's our best chance as opposed to sitting there on Saturday with only a few flakes flying around. But I'll tell you this, 54 degrees will be the last time you see even close to the 50s in quite some time. Watch this. We go from 54 to zero degrees there on Monday. I mean, just in a four to five day swing, you're talking about almost a 55 degree swing. Big time swing in temperatures, rain on Friday, Saturday, few flakes, Sunday. There's your best chance at actually seeing light accumulation in some spots, not all spots, but those winds very gusty as this front rolls on through. And it will be just like two days ago. If you remember two days ago when those uh, showers rolled on through and the front, the snow showers, that is, and those winds started to kick up, what did it start doing? Ushering in that cold, cold air. And that's what, exactly what this is going to do there on Sunday. 15 degrees for an afternoon high, zero overnight, guys. Big time swing of temperatures next three to five days. Where's oh, the yeah. high again? I didn't see a high. <laughs> you don't want to see it. I'm not going to repeat it. It's yeah. nasty. <laughs> Woo, yeah. thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you. We're back on WKYT in just a moment. Could the Cats be in line to get another top basketball recruit? And it's a top 10 matchup for the UK women tonight at the Coliseum. Dave Baker's next with sports. Been a tough ride lately on Wall Street, but here at midday on this Thursday, all the major market indicators pointing upward. Not all that long ago, South Carolina and Kentucky were two teams with fiery new coaches, and they were trying to climb to the top of the Southeastern Conference in women's basketball. Now they're two of the powerhouses, and tonight at Memorial Coliseum, the ninth-ranked Cats play host to number two South Carolina. Last season, UK split the series with the Gamecocks, getting a tough win in Lexington on Senior Day. Coach Matthew Mitchell says playing South Carolina, well, it's kind of like a bad trip to the dentist. It's tough. Root canals are tough, and South Carolina is tough, and they always are tough. They play real hard, and they play real tough, and we're familiar with each other, and the game means something. And, you know, over the last few years, we've both been uh, competing at high levels in the conference. We've both won championships in the last few years, and so it's a big game, tough game. Two of my favorite people in college sports, Matthew Mitchell and South Carolina coach Don Staley. Number two and number nine tonight at the Coliseum. If you can't make it, you can see it at 7 o'clock on the SEC Network. On the men's side, five-star point guard Kobe Simmons will announce his college choice on Saturday, according to Evan Daniels of Scout. He has it down to Ohio State, Arizona, and Kentucky. Some experts say that early decision would seem to point toward Arizona or Ohio State. We shall wait and see. Cats travel to Auburn on Saturday. It'll be a 4 o'clock tip on ESPN. John Calipari will talk about that matchup with Bruce Pearl's Tigers a little bit later today. And the Cleveland Browns have hired Bengals offensive coordinator Hugh Jackson is their new coach. He'll be the team's eighth coach since 1999. Now ESPN and several other sources are reporting that Jackson, before he was hired, said that he had no intention of bringing the Johnny Manziel show back to town, and he was told by ownership that would not be a problem. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, a preview of that UK women's game with South Carolina against the second-ranked Gamecocks. That's all at 6 on 630 WLAP. Guys, we'll hear more from Matthew Mitchell and from John Calipari a little bit later. But for now, that's a look at sports on your Thursday. All right, a lot more coming up later. Thank you, Dave. And there's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. Hollywood is mourning the death of a legendary actor. The story coming up. A busy road in Lexington has been closed for hours as police investigate a fatal crash. Coming up at 1230, we're taking a look at the traffic impact and the investigation. Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $22 million and Saturday night's Powerball jackpot $40 million.